what I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a peach if you find the same. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of Hint Water, RX Bar, Quest Nutrition, Atari, and many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Uh, our sponsor today is Rise25, which I co-founded with my business partner, John Corcoran. Rise25 is a conference or software company's 100% outsourced solution to run their own VIP special events and mini conference. Rise 25 is a secret weapon for the conferences and software companies to get more referrals, increase retention with their highest level customers and get more engaged new customers. We do them all over the country. Last year we did them in Austin, Chicago, Santa Barbara, San Diego, New York, Sonoma, many more. So check out rise25.com if you find that your community wants to bring your highest level customers together. Today I'm very excited. We have the co-founder and CEO of Smarty Pants Vitamins. Courtney Nichols Gould's Smarty Pants Vitamins have a gummy obsession, which if you look at their website, they do have a gummy obsession and they have every product for every one, very niched actually. And it started because they believe that the very best vitamins are an all-in-one combination of different nutrients that would save money, time, and peace of mind for their customers. Their products can be found on Amazon, Whole Foods, Kroger, Target, Costco, and many more locations all over the U.S., they're the bottle with a huge owl winking at you. <laughs> and for every bottle sold, they make a one-for-one grant to Vitamin Angels to provide children in need with nutrients. And they have made over 6.2 million nutrient grants to date. Courtney, thanks for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. You know, your products are amazing. You do see them everywhere. And, you know, one of the more interesting facts about you from my extensive research Besides your amazing experience as CEO in the tech startup world to the rise and success of Smarty Pants is that you're a prankster. I would have never known that with, <laughs> from what I've learned from your hard charging leadership yeah. style. Yeah. What's one of your favorite pranks that you pulled? Gosh, there's some really good ones. How do I pick a favorite? Okay. You know, I found in super intense environments, which tend to be the ones that I love, right? Where people are kind of leave it all in the field, do your best, achieve some crazy goal. Uh, you have to balance that with a good sense of humor. Pranks, I find, are very effective at helping us all not take ourselves too seriously. Um, one of our favorite pranks, I did play a prank on my head of sales um, when when she was first starting where we had constructed this very elaborate um, scheme where she was going to have to work in this very tiny corner in our back house facing the bathroom in the back house because it was the only place she could sit and have signal or something that we made up like that. And in fact, it was it really hysterical to us, but it was also so heartbreaking because she was so sweet about it and was like, okay. And she was literally in this tiny corner facing the bathroom, like literally the toilet in our back house. And she did it in such good nature that it didn't last very long because I felt so horrible um, because she was so good natured about it. She just sat down and was like, okay. And I've learned that it's why it's really good to hire people from places. We hired her from ICM and people in jobs like that where they don't get paid very much and they work insane hours but they're really well trained. If you're a startup and you're hiring someone, it makes you seem like the most incredible place to work because like they're not having to work 18 hours a day. Oh. So anyway, the bar really, is set very low in those cases. Yeah, her, exactly. It was a very low bar apparently. So she took it in a far too good naturedly. I have many, many pranks. Um, have any gone bad? Interview. You always worry that one goes bad. I haven't, you know, no. I have to say this. I had one go really wrong in my last gig where I played a prank on, I was the COO on my then CEO and he's super smart, super smart. And he played one back on me that was so, so much more intense than the one I played on him. <laughs> it created an entire like waterfall of events. It was pretty extraordinary, but that would take a whole interview. So we'll, we'll save that got for it. another. Got it. You know, um, I want to get into how you first created your first product, but um, what I find interesting is your background and um, a little of the background of why you chose not to go to Harvard. 
Oh, right. Harvard Business School? Yeah. Well, so I had done this thing at General Motors right out of um, school. My first job was actually working in Texas for uh, Governor Richards, uh, Governor Ann Richards, who's governor. Okay. And I got offered this job to work for GM for the board of directors. And at the time, they had this, this job where you would work for them as kind of a glorified intern for two years, putting together the board book for every meet. They had very frequent board meetings for a company that size, but it was super cool because you got to see all the inner workings. You got to go on the plane with the board members. And, you know, it was amazing for someone, you know, who's like 21 or 22 years old. Uh, and then if you do that for two years, they'll give you a full ride mm. to HBS, but you have to come back and work for them afterwards. And so much to my parents' devastation, I got through, I did the two years and then the internet business was starting in New York City. And instead of going to Harvard, I went to work uh, for these two guys, you know, in their tiny apartment who were starting this new company. Um, I mean, we worked around the clock. There were literally really bunk beds at the office so wow. that you could sleep at the office. Uh, it ended up being a really balance. Yeah, it was, there was no work life balance, but we were 22. Who needs work life balance when you're 22? Um, so anyway, that's why I passed it up. I, you know, I just, I corporate, big corporate environment was just not for me. You know, I really liked the improvisation and the intensity and the speed of these startups. And that was my very first one. And I've been addicted ever since. What was startup? Talk a little bit, describe startup life a little bit because you know people sometimes see oh whatever instagram was bought for a billion dollars and okay. that's how it happens talk about some of the reality like obviously they have bunk beds and you're sleeping and waking up early hours what, what was what was that like at the time yeah the dating pool is like the two other people that you're working with because you don't ever leave the office <laughs> when people say there's no inner office dating i was like that's clearly not created by people who worked in a startup because i hate to tell you but the only people you see are the people in the startup right um you know, it depends on what stage of life you're in. You know, we started ours. We got kids. We have young kids. I mean, there's a lot going on. There are a lot of positive things about startup, the flexibility, all the stuff you hear about. Uh, I'm happy to say that I, I think I'm seeing more now people talking about the, the downside of being an entrepreneur. Look, it's incredibly taxing. It's hard. It's the difference between renting a home and owning a home, right? The plumbing breaks, you call the landlord. The plumbing breaks, there is no, you are the person. Right. You have to call the plumber, pay for the plumber, get the plumber there, be there at the house when they show. I mean, it's just, you're it. And so you, you do have to be really comfortable with a lot of risk. You know, for Gordon and I, it was pretty intense because we're in the same household. So we basically put our entire income on hold for five years. Mm. We used up all of our savings. We had nothing left by the time we were taking a salary. And when we did take a salary, it was a very modest one. And so, you know, I think those, if you're starting a company and you're not 22, those are probably the biggest risks, which is your, your income, your family, you know, is relying on you. And so uh, it's very intense for us. It ended up being an incredible thing, but you know, it's exhausting and it can be, I mean, I know far too many entrepreneurs who we call each other and commiserate. We call each other and cry. We call each other and say, I can, you know, one day it's amazing and the best thing we ever did. And the next day it's like, oh my God, everything's, you know, it's coming to a fiery end. <laughs> totally. What was Which life, what was going on at the time when you started Smarty Pants? Because like you said, it's a big decision and both of you decided to go all in right away. Did one of right. you pursue it? What, what, what did it look like as far as family life and kid life at that time? We created it together. It really all happened at once. And we're a blended family. So our family and the company, all of that happened at the same time. Now, we knew that that was a lot to do at once. And so, like, we had a coach who was one of our co-founders. Uh, we had two co-founders, a guy who's a big preventative health guy in L.A. named Drew Francis and Brett Costin, who's a really well-known uh, coach in L.A. And so we, we really honestly spent, you know, an hour to two hours with Brett every day or for at least, you know, three days a week for the first six months, really, while we were starting the business to make sure that we were setting everything up and that there was clear division of labor and that we weren't going to step on each other's toes and that we understood because that's just a lot to be madly in love with the person while parenting, while launching a business. A lot's an understatement. Yeah. Yeah. It was either going to be wildly successful or a really, really, really bad idea. <laughs> And we've been very fortunate that it's ended up being incredible, but you know, it was certainly a lot of risk and it was a very intense. Did no you doubt. remember any of the key advice Brad gave you at the time? Um, what are some of the key advice? I think one is 
to, I think, be accountable is the thing he really instilled in us. In other words, as much as you can always make it about what you're doing or not doing, as opposed to focusing on what the other person, and that's true in the company as much as in our relationship, um, that's going to get you to the right place, right? If you can come to those moments of conflict with an understanding of what is it that I'm doing to make this worse, um, I think that's really important. And the other one, which became a core value of our company, is transformation. So we always said we wanted this place to be a place where you left better than you came in because hmm. the outcome uncertain, right? Like we don't no, even though we're doing incredibly well, you still don't know. The world is an unpredictable place. Totally. And what it means is the days have to matter, right? Because I'm never getting them back. Especially true if someone who comes in and wasn't here in the very beginning. They're taking a salary. They don't, you know what I mean? Like, I want them to feel like they left here better with more tools. You know, they enjoy their life more. They have more skills. And so transformation was really a core commitment. And that was true for Gordon and I. And so what was so cool about starting the way we did is we had to. You know, it's like the thing about having kids, right? They're mirrors for all the stuff you want to hide from yourself. <laughs> and so relationship is the same thing. Yeah. And so it became a real fulcrum for us of transformation. And we decided we wanted the company to stand for that. So transform our customers' lives, transform our grant recipients' lives, yeah. transform our employees' lives. And we ourselves are always working on trying to be better as people. Totally. Yeah, and it's interesting because I have that written down and flagged on your core values. I was wondering yeah. why the transformation piece, right? Yeah. So... Because you have the transparency, the excellence, right, and transformation, sure. and transformation is not typically what you see on yeah. a core values uh, section. Um, yeah. Talk about the importance of transparency. Why transparency is one of the the core three too? Well, when we started, when we really started, you know, we launched our first product in 2011, and at the time, one of the reasons that I think we got such a strong response um, was because we were being transparent. And in the supplement industry, that was one of the things that was missing. And I'll give you an example. There is a, on the bottle, you know, there's the, the nutrients. So it'll say vitamin A. But then you have to list, you don't have to, you know, you list the form of the nutrient. And in fact, we know of companies right now that are lobbying to, to remove that, where you just have to list the type. Mm. And to us, that's exactly what's wrong with the industry. Because the whole point is you want to let people know where things come from. Totally. And particularly because we're choosing the premium forms of those nutrients that are more bioavailable, we want, you need to see there's a difference, like there is a choice. So I think transparency is just one of the things we identified that was clearly missing from the supplement industry. Not, not kind of at the high end. There are a lot of really good companies doing good things, but for what was available widely, yeah. there just wasn't enough information. And, you know, we, we put a stamp on the bottom of every bottle that we sell that has like a, it has a, a lot number on it, so you can go onto the website, look up that specific lot, and see the mm. test results. Very cool. That product. So, because one of the other big claims was, how do we know what's in the bottle? You know, what you say is on the bottle. Well, there's been st a lot of stuff in the news the past few years, yeah. even with Walmart. I think it was Walmart, yeah. or GNC. Yeah, right? CVS and GNC. Yeah. yeah. So it was kind of like, what are all the things we could do that would get at this one? There are like four or five core issues we think in the supplement industry, and we try to think about what are all the ways that shows up to make sure we're trying to address as many of them as we can just to make it easier for people to feel good about whether they take our product or someone else's so they can oh. feel good about it. Yeah, that leads into what's top of mind in I want to talk about some of the things that you learned that surprised you. I want to go mm -hmm. I want to circle back to the bioavailability piece at, at some point because yeah. I want to know what in there that you have found from your research because I know you have a whole like medical advisor medical board that's yeah. looking and doing research to seeing which piece of, you know, someone, a, a B vitamin, maybe a different form, and what yep. you found has worked and more bioavailable than something else, and that's why I use it. But you're hitting on some of the core values, and the transformation piece kind of leads to what's learned that has surprised you and some, some of the things about changing laws. Yeah. Well, yes, a transformation of the industry is a yeah. thing that when we first started, we weren't, you know, we were just trying to make something. you got to make... Yeah, create a sustainable company before you yeah, yeah go down. Yeah. But what's happened is we realized that if we could bring the values that we to this one product across a whole line, we could prove to the industry that you could make different choices and still be very successful. And so um, for us, that transformation, like you said, had to do with the forms of nutrients. So, you know, we were just people when we started the company. We were not, you know, that's why we have a, a board of experts that are kind of leaders in preventative health helping us make these decisions. But for instance, I didn't know there were different forms of B12. Like I didn't know there was a difference between cyanocobalamin and methylcobalamin. I didn't know that there was such a thing as methylated B vitamins. 
All that really means is when people used to say, oh, vitamins, they're just expensive pee. Well, in some cases, that's true, right? right? And it has as much to do with the form of the nutrient as which nutrients you're getting, which was not something we knew at all. So since then, what I've learned is that it does make a difference and the forms can make a big difference. And one of the ones you see talked about a lot now is actually folate. And folate has two forms. There's folic acid, which is what you're used to seeing on all kinds of packages, right? Fortified with folic acid. And then there's L-methylfolate. And there's even something more specific, L5-methylfolate. And that is the form that actually is more bioavailable and is not used very often because it's quite expensive. But if you're an expectant mom, let's say, and you go to your doctor to get a prescription for prenatal vitamins, they're going to say, make sure you get L5-methylfolate. And that's because there are actually a lot of people now, they're identifying that have a gene that make it impossible for them to absorb folic yeah. acid. And so choosing that more that form, that premium form is really important. So Again, and that also gets back to why putting on the label, the form, if it just says folate, you're not going to know if it's folic acid or L-methylfolate. And if you have that gene, how are you supposed to make a decision and be an informed consumer? So to the second part of your question, as we've learned this stuff, we realize that there are laws in place that really we think work against people being informed consumers, which we want everybody to be for our own sake, right? We were so surprised when we learned this stuff that we realize everyone else is. And if we're in the business and we keep learning this stuff, I know most people are, are not hip to this yet or, you know, haven't been told. And so that's something that we're focusing on. Where do we see laws that we think are counterproductive or work against, um, work against people being informed? If I can, there's this crazy side story. We just launched Smarty Paws, which is I the same. That. Yeah. It's the same approach, comprehensive, whole ingredient, organic ingredient, all in one, multifunction for dogs, right? And we wanted to make, we're very focused on the environmental impact of the stuff that we make as well. And so we were putting them all in these omnidegradable pouches. We find out at the last minute that you're not allowed to put on the pouch that it's omnidegradable. And why are we not allowed to put it on the pouch? Because Cargill lobbied against being able to put that on the pouch so that other people will buy their pouch. You know, that's, mm. you, you just cover all of these laws that get existed because someone lobbied to obfuscate. You go back, you track back where the money, where the money came from. And like who, if you'd ever asked me seven years ago, you're going to end up lobbying to change some law about omni degree. Like, of course not. But if no one else is going to do it, we're going to do it. Right. Like so, it's a ridiculous law and it doesn't serve anyone. And we've got environmental threats left and right. So we're going to take a stand. So that's kind of the stuff we try to really it matters to us. We're people like we, we have kids. We have, do you know, like we try to make decisions from the place of like, what do I care about? And what do I think other people probably mm -hmm. care about as well? And let's go fight for them because we have a platform now, right? We're a big enough company. We can fight for these things and we really want to. I mean, that's a big decision, you know, from a leadership standpoint, because that's real dollars that you're investing yeah. in real resources, time from the company you're investing in that. How do you decide how to allocate that? Like in that, in that, particular case did you already produce the packaging because that means reproducing yeah. the packaging essentially or do you just go out with what you have you know what we had to do in this case is we were launching with the packaging and it won't look the way the super fancy packaging does because it's omnidegradable and we don't get to tell people hey the reason this looks this way is we made the right choice and no one else is making it so we we had an internal discussion and we said you know what our goal is always to do the right thing, even if no one ever knows about it. You know what I mean? It's like all the little decisions that make the yeah. difference in who you are and what you stand for. And so we did, we're sticking with it and we're going to work on trying to get it changed. You know, it's one of the benefits of growing. It's it, the reason that we make those decisions is now, now it's not an either or. Now we could do both. We can both grow the brand and invest in the company, grow the company and support our employees and do all those things and still invest in trying to address some things that have bothered us for a long time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But like you said, first, you got to do first things first. You got to be successful or you don't, you don't have leverage to do anything. Right. Yeah. I mean, you made some of those decisions as a foundation to your platform with the, the vitamin angels, right? From the get go, yep. you decided we're going to be yeah. doing this. Talk about that decision. And because again, that's before you even start and you're getting off the ground and yep. in a physical products world, it's not like a, like a, you know, a tech startup, which requires a lot of resources, but as you grow with physical products, you have to invest even more to purchase Brutal. more products. Yeah, the right? cash flowing of inventory is the number one. That's the thing we didn't know, because Gordon and I both had built businesses or been a part of building businesses before, but we'd never made a thing. And 
that that idea of cash pressure as you're particularly if you're very successful because your trailing revenue is never going to cash flow your forward looking growth right um so that is a, a big deal i'll tell you i always give credit to the um the giving part of our business to blake mykoski because he had he had started toms and i think had made it tenable to investors that from the word go you would be giving something away even if you weren't profitable and we were very fortunate that in the world of uh, vitamins and supplements, it is incredibly inexpensive to have a profound impact. You know, micronutrient supplementation is considered the one of the most important tools in preventing global childhood mortality, and it's 25 cents a year. I mean, it's nothing. It's just so to us, it just seemed like such a no-brainer. If we had the opportunity to build that in from the word go, we could have a profound impact on delivering these nutrients to expectant moms and kids. And now 6.2 million. I mean, that's like, you know, that talk, talk about, I mean, that just, talk to be able impact, to be a part yeah. of something. Yeah. I mean, it just, it, it means so much to our employees and we actually don't promote it a lot because we're a premium product and I want people to buy it because they believe it's the best thing for them. But it is an incredibly powerful thing, and, and it means a lot to all of us here that we're able to do that. Totally. So go back to the first product you created. What mm -hmm. did you decide to create first? Or maybe you created several products at once. No, we launched first. This was We did not. Uh, we probably would have done it differently if we didn't know. We just created this one product because really we were just thinking about kids' brain health was the original idea for the company. And then we launched this single little SKU, Kids Complete, because the idea was, why do you have to choose between like stuff that's affordable, stuff they'll take, and stuff that we felt good about that really had the sort of best nutrients in it? Yeah. And those existed, but all in separate products. So we wanted to we make it all in one, which at the time we couldn't find. And so we did that. And what happened was we launched on Amazon in 2011, and all of a sudden we got all these parents writing us saying, oh, my God, I wish you would make one for me because now I'm stealing my kids' vitamins. And I don't think Gordon and I even occurred to us to make, like, a gummy for adults, right? But it turns out there are a ton of people who will not stick with – you know, that's the problem in supplements. People don't stick with it. They'll go out and buy this stuff, but six months later, are they still taking it every day? Totally. And gummy is very effective at getting people to stick with a regimen and therefore get the benefit – and so that's how it started. We did not launch with 10 SKU. We launched with one SKU. And then a year later, we launched a second product. And then a year later, we launched a prenatal. You know, we rolled into this pretty cautiously because, again, we had we were all in. Our entire family's livelihood was wrapped up in the business. So I think it made us probably more cautious, which might have – I mean, we're now one of the fastest growing in the supplement industry. But in the first few years, we, we grew quickly, but not as quickly as we could have. And I think it gave us a very strong foundation that's serving us very well now because we moved into each channel very, you know, we wanted to make sure, did it make sense? Did the pricing work? So we didn't go into offline until, you know, 2013 before we ever sold in brick and mortar. Yeah. Talk about the some of the challenges early on because um, I imagine yeah. there's some reasons why people don't put it all in one. And yeah. so just as a differentiation piece, Courtney, I find it's even now it's find a hard it's it's hard to find like a, a kid's vitamin multivitamin that has DHA and those things in it actually. In, in general. Right. Like yep. That's I, right. I don't even know Which one when I look. That's why we put it in there. Well, and some of them might have DHA, but they don't have DHA and EPA, which right. is really what you important fatty acids. But um but to remind me, of the, what was the first part oh, of the question? Are, though? The challenges of doing it. I imagine there's some industry maybe That's saying, why we can't even do blanked. it. There were so many challenges. That's why I just blanked it out. <laughs> um, I'm trying it to forget really, that. It was really hard. I mean, listen, the first two or three products we made, I, I mean, it was a fight to get the manufacturer to agree to do it. One, because we were so tiny and they were like, yeah, whatever, you're not going to exist in a year. Um, and two, because it was it was really hard. The nutrient density of our gummy is higher than anyone in the industry. If you look at the amount of nutrients that are in the product right. and loading, I think that's what was so unique. But fortunately, we, we explained to them the benefits that it was a niche like – there were plenty of single nutrient options out there, but if we could do this, it would really provide an alternative for people who don't want to buy five different products and that it would be worth it. And I think as soon as they saw we became the number one product uh, on Amazon, first the number one kids vitamin, then, then the number one multi and the number one omega-3 with the same product, 
that they became a believer and they realized that it was a really powerful way to approach the, the product design. Yeah. I remember, you know, we had talked before we hit record about, I watched an interview seven years ago when, uh, with you and, and Jason Calacanis and This Week in Startup. Did I look like 15 when I did it? Probably. It's exactly a lot of the, you look exactly the same. <laughs> nice try. You tried to trick me on that one. Um, <laughs> but, um, and you were talking about at the time, it was interesting listening to it a few days ago. Even then, he had said, oh, an internet-only um, release of the product. And you go, you know, we are open to, even at that time, you said, you know, we will think about going into retail um, because yeah. we just want to get in the hands of people. But, but talk about at that time, what was your strategy of going di just direct-to-consumer on Amazon? Well, and I give Gordon, uh, my husband, co-CEO, a lot of credit for this because he, I think, really understood it was just starting then. And now we know, right, Amazon is the most powerful product engine on the market more than Google, right? So people are looking for something. They go to Amazon first, even if they're buying it in store. Mm -hmm. So part of it was necessity, which is acquiring a customer direct to consumer is very expensive. And I know it's very attractive. And a lot of people are starting these D2C businesses. But the reality is for us at scale, particularly if it's a product that we, we know has wide use and is something you'll buy frequently, going to a place like Amazon where they're already aggregating those customers really mattered. And two, I think Gordon saw that if we could establish a number one rank and we have all these reviews from people, which we can't buy, right? They're authentic feedback from customers. That drives, it creates such a positive flywheel of um, kind of a virtuous loop. Of the, the reviews drive sales on Amazon, but they drive, they drive purchases everywhere else as well. And that it really becomes a powerful platform. And at the time that we did it, everyone and their brother wasn't there yet. And so it was a lot more cost effective, right? It gets more challenging, obviously, uh, as more people come into that channel. But it was the right place to start because you get immediate customer feedback. You see what people like and don't like about your product. And you get these reviews that drive word of mouth when you can't spend, I mean, we didn't spend any money on marketing for the first four years of the business, right? So uh, I think it was a great place to start. But the reality is the majority of purchases are still happening in stores. So Amazon is a very important place to be for us. We love it for a lot of different reasons, but you still need to be in those retailers because that's where most customers still are. Yeah. I want to talk about the transition to retail, but... But even then, with using the internet, in your extensive background in tech companies, you still went grassroots, and yeah. you sent them to a hundred of your I don't know, those influencers. Friends. So talk about what you did yeah. there. They were not influencers, although some of them are influencers by default. But they were basically just our friends. Because <laughs> remember, this is influencers didn't exist. Mommy bloggers had just started, I think. But it was really like. Hey guys, Gordon and I started this company and we're really proud of this. We'd love for you to try it. Tell us what you think. Give us your feedback. And that was it. I mean, this really was like literally in our garage. We moved into offices two years ago, you know, and we did $50 million. You know what I mean? Like this was in our, in our back house. And so, you know, with our kids, like writing thank you notes by hand to our customers, this was not a big operation. And so you do what you can. And what we could do is call our friends, you know, and send product to people and just say, give us your feedback, you know, and, and that you just have to be resourceful. We didn't even know investors. I mean, Gordon and I built stuff, but we were in tech and a lot of those investors now invest in consumer packaged goods. But back then, no way. And a husband and wife team, definitely no way. Like the combination of those two things in tech, they were just like, very cool idea. We have no idea how to evaluate this business. And so you do what you can. You know, you just start where you can start and hustle. A lot of hustle. A lot of talking to like parents at places like, oh, hi, you know, duh. guess what? We started this company. Would you be interested in trying to say, I mean, a lot of embarrassing moments, frankly, where you just have to strike up conversations. There was one interview you did where you were talking about you were in a movie theater. And you guys always carry samples on. And I actually got internally nervous of listening to the story. Oh, my God. It was so awful. It was Gordon. You know, he's so brave. I am actually not brave in this way. And we were we were in a movie theater with the kids who were also horrified. And he had packets of Smarty Pants. And there were parents sitting behind us. And I literally, I could feel that he was about to do it. 
And I started elbowing. I was like, do not under any circumstance turn around in the IMAX theater and off because they're going to think you're some creep. Like, just don't do it. He's like, no, the kids are here. They're going to know, you know, and he did it. I just remember thinking, oh my God, I'm going to die. Were they talking about vitamins or something? And it was fine. No, no, no. Total non sequitur. He just around was like, hi, I'm Gordon. But you know what? He was very charming and very real and authentic. And they ended up taking samples. Who knows? Maybe they became a customer. I don't know. But it was horrifying for me. He believes but you gotta do it. Yeah, you, know? you gotta do it. Yeah, you gotta do it. So you know, it's interesting that talk about the transition to retail because when you say retail and when and you know Smarty Pants is in Whole Foods, it's in Kroger, right. it's in Costco. I also get very nervous because that seems like a huge animal. Like I feel I don't know when I hear the the safer realm of internet. <laughs> And now you have product that you're putting out on shelves and you got to drive this whole other channel. It's, it's a whole other animal. So how did you just, why did you then decide to go into retail? Because some people will choose not to do that. And then what worked? I mean, it's kind of what I said before, which is just that the, look, the majority of people are still buying things in stores, mm-hmm. but in our category and supplements, the vast majority of sales are still happening at retail. So if, once we saw where the product was going and that, frankly, this was bigger than just a kid's product, that we could really change the industry. You know, we had the potential to really disrupt and bring true innovation to the supplement aisle. I think we realized, okay, we're going to have to go into retail, but we're going to do it in a very, we're going to be very thoughtful. So we understand kind of how the pricing and margin work, because that was all new to us, right? I mean, it's crazy and different channels have wildly different margins and, you know, and so I think we did it in the right order, which is we started in natural, which made sense for us because we were premium and we knew people would understand the story and the price point. We were more expensive, which also was a risk um, in the multivitamin category. But then you go into natural and, and it just took off like a rocket ship and, you know, it gives you confidence. So it doesn't all happen overnight. Again, why I said I think we built a really strong foundation is we did stair step. You know, we only went into Target two years ago. But now we're one of the fastest growing brands in Target, right? And we launched in Costco a year ago. But but again, then it, we felt confident doing all these things because the thing that's so different about our company is our retention rate is so high. And we know that for a fact because of the stats, you know, from our online, uh, from everything we've done online. And so we knew that our retention rate on average was about 2x the industry average in terms of people repurchasing a product again and again and again which is why we started the whole company to begin with, right? We designed it trying to fix this problem in supplements where people don't stick with the regimen for very long. Uh, And that's not just one thing. And that's why I think a lot of people have launched companies, but they haven't really gotten at what we're doing because doing what we do requires thinking about a million different things. It's not one thing. And so it's not, oh, they taste good or, oh, you know, cool packaging. It's, you know, you got to be thoughtful about every single piece if you're really going to crack the code and so that's what gave us confidence going into places like Target, launching chainwide at Target, launching chainwide at Costco, launching. Uh, we just launched at Walmart chainwide a week ago. Congratulations. Wow. Thank you very much. And, you know, it's a really big deal for us because we did not start this company to provide more solutions for rich people. I mean, it's great. We love for them to take the product. We, you know, we feel it's the best one out there. But this is really about making premium nutrients affordable. To, the, to everybody and to people who need it most. And so for us, launching at Walmart actually is is like a, you know, a company lifetime achievement um, because that's what we that's want. That's kind of their ethos, right? Yeah, yeah. and they really are. They, I, am, I have been so impressed actually. You know, that organization, they are really trying to move the needle on public health by changing what's on the shelf because they know how many people come through their doors. And it's very clearly become over the last two years, you saw what they did with organic vegetables and fruits. They are really getting behind it, and I, you know, I think it's a great thing, frankly, for everybody, and we're we're thrilled with that. So anyway, that's kind of what we built these launches on something that we knew was a was worth the risk. Did you have to do Courtney? Did you have to do anything differently with the packaging or something like that to to move into retail, or is it the exact same product that you exactly. have on? It is okay. It is. And that's one of the things, you know, we'd seen other people do that where they make a cheaper version for other channels that, you know, are lower priced. And we just made a decision that's, we're not going to do that. You know, the whole point is that if we design something that we know is the best, we're not going to make a less best version of it. And so we change the sizing, right? Sometimes. So we'll have a big size in Costco, which is right. really typical. 
on a smaller size in drug or grocery or something. Um, so there might be a sizing difference, but it's the same formula sold everywhere. Totally. Yeah. Um, and so I know you guys are very, very customer centric. You listen to all feedback. If you look at any of the stuff on Amazon from Smarty Pants, there's always responses yeah. to the negative ones, positive ones. It doesn't matter. Um, yeah. What's some of the negative feedback you got early on? And, and then how, what you learn from it to, to change. Yeah. So there are a couple things. There's the negative that actually becomes the positive. So one of the things people talked about was, oh, why do I have to take four gummies? Right. And because it's an all in one. Because it tastes good. Don't complain. No, just, well, exactly. Yeah. But, no, but, but it's a valid question, right? Because they're used to seeing two gummies or whatever. And it's because we include things like omega threes, which are really large molecules and we need them to taste good. But the reality is if you take the amount of sugar and the nutrient density of our product and put it against anybody else, you actually end up with less sugar and more nutrients So and, and spend less money because you have to buy four or five different things to get what you get in our product. So, you know, that that was, I think, a really important thing. But it was certainly a piece of feedback. And what's good about that is you then figure out how to talk about it, right? The only other one uh, is definitely sugar, right? People say, why is there sugar in this? And some, you could make a different choice. You could use artificial sweeteners or you could use even artificial sweeteners that they don't think are bad for you. But really the advice of our um, scientific advisory board and all the leaders in, in health that we talked to, they said, you know, we know what sugar does in the body. We know how it acts. It's safe. Your brain uses sugar. Just use the least amount possible. Use the clean, you know, organic um, sugar and make it as nutrient dense as possible. So if we're going to use sugar, we want it to have so much nutrient that it's, you know, it's no more than, I don't know, having an apple or something, but with an enormous amount of nutrient density. And so those are the, probably the two biggest around gummy that we got. Now we've now expanded into other formats and you'll see us continue to do that. Um, play anywhere we see where the need for a comprehensive premium kind of multifunction solution is needed. Well, that's probably where we're going to go. But in gummy, those were probably the two. Yeah, because the perception, too, I, I remember you talking early on, you know, you see the dusting of the stuff on the outside of the vitamin, and people, the perception was it had more sugar right. because of that, right? Right. Well, and that's only on one, that's really only on one product. The mm. Kids Complete is the only one that has the dusting on the outside. And all the new products now, like, we know they don't stick together. We don't need to. We don't need to do that. Um, I think for one of the products, it still does make it appealing to kids. And so for parents who whose kids are super resistant, it's very effective. Um, but we have a fiber version that doesn't have any added um, sugar that, you know, is very effective if kids will take it. So what are the, some of the best sellers now? What are the most popular ones? We have got a few. We have the Kids Complete still, obviously, is, you know, I think quickly becoming kind of like the new Flintstones. It's a very, very popular product. Uh, we have the number one fiber product on Amazon, which is the Kids Fiber, which is the same as Kids Complete, but just with fiber added, because that's obviously such a big issue for parents. And fiber in general in the American diet is one of the kind of highlight deficiencies. Our Women's Complete is growing very, very quickly. And we have a prenatal which is a best-selling uh, gummy, frequently has the number one spot on Amazon uh, and is doing very well. Um, so those are probably our number ones. Our newest ones are things like our teen. We launched a teen guide um, and our master's product for 50 plus men's women's. And the, the thing those products, those four products have in common is uh, lutein zeaxanthin for eye health, which is a thing that you're going to see more and more people talking about because of all the blue light from all the screens. It's totally. starting to really affect people's eyes. And um, we have a product that has a clinicals around, you know, preventing uh, damage to your eye from blue light. So anyway, those are kind of the new stuff and Smarty Paws, which we're very excited about. Why the decision between, I know that teen girls and teen guys, mm -hmm. again, because it's, it's, that's not an easy decision to make. Now you have to produce two separate products. Yeah, like, yeah, hey, let's just do teenagers exactly. and forget about it. Why the teen girls and guys? Well, because really we saw, you know, this is one of the, going back to the, one of the things that we want to work on in terms of transparency, people don't realize when they look at the label recommendation, that label recommendation, you know, it says daily value, 50% or whatever, that covers people from age four to 99. Right. That's stupid, right? Because hello, someone who's four is not the name of someone who's 99. So what we're, we're using actually to design are a very different set of standards created by the NAH, which are 
divided by gender and much smaller age groups. So it's like age four to seven girls, age, you know, seven to 14 girls. And so when we looked at that, there's a critical moment of change where there are different needs. And so we wanted to acknowledge that you're not uh, probably your full weight yet, maybe your full height. So you are still changing and you've got some um, acute energy needs. You've got, you know, we wouldn't want to put the same amount of energy in a toddler necessarily, let's say. If anyone has toddlers, they understand. Uh, Versus a teenager who is teenager who is just burning calories just by existing because their body is changing so fast. So, um, and it turns out it's extremely popular. You know, that category, I think you're going to see explode. I think you're going to start seeing teen customization uh, across a lot of products. Courtney, first of all, I have one. I have one last question, but I want to thank you. This has been fantastic. Everyone should check out SmartyPantsVitamins.com. Check it out, and you can probably go in any major retailer and pick them up. Also, um, yep. there's so much to talk about. So much I didn't get at because as a tech founder, I was interested in your tech stack, the tools and software you use. But since we're limited on time, I want to know. It's good I don't... To, get to it because I won't be able to answer. Okay. Um, I always like to ask at the end, since it's Inspired Insider, what's been a low moment and how you push through, and then what's been a high point for you? There have been a lot of both of those. I was just meeting with an entrepreneur this morning, and she was like, so now that, you know, after the first couple of years when that stopped happening, I was like, yeah, no, it does not ever stop happening. You still have existential, you know, threat moments every day. Not every day, but even at this stage. Um I think one of the low moments is when um, we worried very much about uh, there was a shortage of nutrients. There were some key nutrients, the forms of which we use, but no one else uses. And there was a global shortage of uh, something. And we were so low on the totem pole because we were still such a small company. That was a very hard moment because you have to make a choice. Like, do you switch the form of the nutrient, but that's not true to who you are? Do you stop making your product, which at a company that size would be devastating. Uh, we made a choice to create a public conversation with our, with our sort of users or, you know, our customers around it. Transparency, right? Yeah. But that was hard, but that was hard, you know, I mean, and there's so many of them. I mean, I really, there's so many moments like that where um, you can choose the easy path or the right path. And unfortunately they very rarely seem to be the same one. I don't know why the hard thing is the right thing all the time. That just seems wrong. But anyway, that is how it seems to happen. So, um, and then a high point, really, when we realized that we could, we could hit 10 million matching grants, which is our goal for Vitamin Angels, and also have a company that's reaching millions of customers, um, and provide, you know, a great return to the investors who really believed in us in the early days and employ people at a, at a, you know, really, really fair wage and give them equity. I mean, I don't think you get to do that many times in life. So to me, the high point is every time I give myself two seconds to sit back and and just wonder at the fact that I've been given the opportunity to do this every day with a group of people who care so tremendously and enjoy their work and work their butts off to make it happen. And and then we get to change lives in some cases. It's a, I don't know, it's a very humbling thing. You know, it, ch- it chokes me up, really. I just... I don't think I'll ever get to do anything as good as this. And, and I'm really grateful. And if that's, that's the thing that keeps me going in the low moments, you know? Totally. Courtney, I want to be the first one to thank you. Everyone check out smartypantsvitamins.com. Anywhere else we should point people towards online that we haven't mentioned. Ah, uh, you know, any, really any major retailer online or off, um, you can find us now. Cool. Well, thank you so much. And, thank uh, you. check them out at a store near you. Thanks, Jack.